Welcome to this morning on Asake Podcast, your daily dose of insightful conversation on current affairs, politics, and social issues. Please share and also follow us on social media at SiteZW. Now, stay tuned to today's episode. A very good morning to you guys. Welcome to the Monday edition of this morning on Asake. My name is Brighto Ngube. Today, the weather is much better. Uh, the sun is out in Bolao. Yeah, it's quite warmer here and there. Good morning to you, Nohika, this morning. Good morning, Brighton, and good morning to our guests. Welcome to this morning on Asake. Remember, a few years ago, this day, not since 1 July, mm-hmm. uh, we lost an icon, a global icon, that's Dr. Joshua Mkabu Longo, my father is in Mbappe, man. Mm-hmm. As I was reflecting on 25 years, I say, 25, 25 years ago, we lost an icon. What does it mean uh, to us now? Uh, 44 years of democracy. And if you do write a letter to him today, I speak about Zimbabwe, the modern day Zimbabwe. What will he say? Yes, yeah, Brighton. And to think of the dreams, uh, the, the vision that he had for Zimbabwe as well. We celebrate Uva Bungomo on this day. Anwalt, good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. I think it's a very unfortunate uh, statement coming from a minister who signs both as the Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services as well as the Minister of Home Affairs uh, and Culture, Cultural Heritage. You know, both these ministers are so critical as part of our national policy infrastructure for protection of fundamental human rights of Zimbabwean people. Uh, the Minister of Information and Publicity in particular uh, has a core mandate and obligation to protect, promote and fulfill the right to freedom of expression of the people of Zimbabwe. And uh, the Minister of Home Affairs uh, also has a core business of promoting and protecting uh, and fulfilling fundamental rights and freedoms of the people of Zimbabwe. Because of the fact that the Bill of Rights is entrenched in our constitution, um, you find that uh, Parliament, even Parliament itself, cannot change the Bill of Rights without having to come back to the people through a referendum if they want to tweak or change uh, the fundamental rights. And uh, the, there's no minister of government who has a right to change or undermine the implementation of enjoyment of fundamental rights. It is unconstitutional and a severe breach, a severe breach of the law. Because when you look at the constitution itself, in particular section two, it provides that that constitution is the supreme law of the land, which is binding on everyone, uh, more so on ministers, on police, on security services, who have the obligation to facilitate and protect uh, the constitutional rights. So, you know, the minister's statement reading through it, you see that uh, any conduct or law uh, that is inconsistent with the constitution is uh, deemed to be invalid in terms of um, section two of our constitution. Um, The importance of facilitating and promoting and fulfillment of human rights is emphasized in the Constitution itself by also a reference to the founding values and national objectives in our Constitution, which, uh, among other things, speak of protecting of human rights and observance of good governance and the rule of law. So the minister's statement uh, on the face of it uh, is at complete variance with these uh, legal principles that are binding on him, on the government, entire government of Zimbabwe, including the police and the security uh, agencies. Um, you know, I tried to look at the statement to see whether there is any uh, legal provision or constitutional provision that he was relying on, and um, there isn't any. What it does, it simply betrays a sense that the minister is panicky or uh, afraid of something that is not very self-evident in the statement that he has made. But again, panic or fear on the part of authorities is never justification to act unconstitutionally and in breach of the rule of law and principles of constitutionalism. And um, the unfortunate way is that it's, all, it's also worded in a very vague way because there is a threat of indeterminate action to an indeterminate number of people at an indeterminate period without precision or, or, or directly identifying who the targeted uh, individuals are. So the problem with that type of um, policy articulation is that it indirectly gives permission to security services to act in an arbitrary and uh, indiscriminate manner 
And uh, as you know, sometimes we've experienced these drug net arrests where people simply get targeted because the security forces, when they get deployed without specific precision on what it is that they are trying to be containing, they tend to simply comply with uh, instructions. And, and and as a result, I think it's very unfortunate that um, uh, such a statement can really result in real danger being express, uh, experienced by innocent uh, civilians yeah, at the instance of a minister who has a duty to protect them. Um, there's a lot of people who have suffered trauma, who have suffered arbitrary detention, torture, violence, arbitrary arrests, etc., simply because of the fact that uh, the secret forces are given imprecise information about law enforcement um, through these types of uh, policy uh, statements. And, and it's very damaging to our country, especially now that we're going to be having the sudden decades of state. I think the last thing you would expect is a government that um, directs security services uh, to target indeterminate number of people for indeterminate causes. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Arnold, for that. Allow me to bring in Senzele. What are your thoughts? What is your analysis on this statement? Uh, good morning, Anshanta and Brighton. But my, my thinking is that uh, this statement is not really addressed to the opposition per se and to, to the CSOs. Uh, they are just being used as a, as a scapegoat. I believe that uh, this statement is uh, addressed to internally uh, to ZANU-PF factions. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is that uh, you remember that uh, sometime last year during the ZANU-PF con- uh, conference, which was in, uh, I think it was in October, uh, a, a choir from Maswingo uh, sang a song that uh, up to 2030. And that uh, the, the commissar then gave them uh, a, a song of the Day award, and after that we then saw, you know, the many slogans, "Bamnangagua," "Banengeva Report 2030," and that has been like, you know, the new slogan. Uh, then later on, the, the president, uh, the, his own statement, where he was saying he had no intention uh, to violate the constitution, but. Uh, a few weeks ago, he actually, uh, you know, called two ministers on stage. I'll uh, ask them to do the slogan, and they said, "Wam nanga go report 2030." And not, he never said anything about uh, them not, uh, you know, saying something that he, he said that he's not interested in it. So definitely within ZANU PF. Uh, there, there is that uh, uh, internal fight about uh, either extending the term of the president uh, for to a third term or uh, extend extending the current term to 2030, whatever uh, they think is going to win the day. And uh, oh, there, there are guys within the party or oh, that is NPF who might not be uh, who would not be definitely uh, agreeing with that. But from the experience, you talk about Dinyani, talk about uh, you know the 20. 13, 2015 fights in ZANPF that led to Mujuri and others being fired. Talk about the coup. Uh, ZANPF factions tend to fight sometimes via civil society and via opposition elements, unfortunately. And and, and, and you find that uh, people within uh, some sectors of opposition and some set- sectors of civil society will be, you know, you know, told to do certain things so that with the hope that they will be accommodated or they will be you know be protected uh, when 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 zanu you know that faction takes part that's the main reason why in 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 2017 you saw a lot of us uh marching with the soldiers a lot of us a lot of politicians a lot of civil society organizations were busy with the coup and unfortunately they got nothing out of it so from this i can say safely that uh, 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 in my view, uh, this is about internal. The warning is internal, and it's probably a warning to those who, uh, you know, they look at it and say, okay, if you think that your the, the certain factions are going to use the old veterans to push for their agendas, then the old veterans should be warned that you are. We after them. I'm also saying this in the sense that uh, it, 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 most of us can easily say, uh, maybe because of the the Kenyan scenario, Zimbabwe uh, thinks that what happened in Kenya would happen in Zimbabwe. My my view on that is that Zimbabweans are capable of doing uh, what happened in Kenya because they've done it before. But currently, 
it's unlikely. You know, the, the opposition is at this weakest. Uh, you know, I don't know which opposition we'll be talking about, whether we talk about opposition led by Welsh, whether we talk about opposition led by uh, Chamisa, or we are talking about opposition led by, I'm not sure whether Chamisa leads any opposition, or that we are talking about opposition led by, by Sengezo. They are the weakest at the moment. I think for the first time since 2000, uh, ZANPF is not even having sleepless nights, uh, thinking of the opposition because they've managed to, uh, to, 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 to hijack or to, to, to take whatever is remaining of the opposition and they are totally in control. So I don't see anything happening from the opposition. Uh, talk about civil society. Civil society is at its weakest as well. We used to have a very vocal, strong civil society organizations in Zimbabwe, but currently because of many factors, which I think there is fatigue. I mean, for a lot of guys who been there uh, for many years. I haven't said it, you know, like it. So they are playing it safe. You know, post-2017, there is a lot of corruption that has happened in, in politics and in civil society. So the, 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 the enemy right now, uh, the, the, the person who's capable or the party that is capable of causing anarchy, it's ZANPF itself. They are the only people who can demonstrate against each other or, you know, because they are not happy with the, the extension of the, the, the term or the, the, the two So we, we need to look at the minister's statement and say, who is he addressing exactly? Also, is there any you know, language being used now by the minister there? The issue of your days are numbered. Well, let's focus on that. What language being used there by, by the minister? Well, that was the recklessness of the minister, which has always been the case of ZANU. You know, ZANU has always been used this kind of, of, of languages, you know, telling people that, uh, you know, blessed are those who follow the path of ZANU PF, but their numbers, are, uh, their days on earth are going to be increased, calling people cockroaches. Quite interesting, uh, you know, what a twist, Brighton. Zenzele thinks, you know what, the opposition is not the threat, CSOs are not the threat, but actually something is brewing within Zanupia. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Lewanika. Good morning, Chief. When you look at the terms of reference for, 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 for our uh, particular Minister of, um, of Information, there are a number of responsibilities that they have, but amongst those responsibilities are just five that I want to highlight and juxtapose against the statement that, the, that, that uh, Dr. Mswere uh, issued. The first one is facilitating two-way communication between government and citizens. The second one is building a good image of the country. The third one is developing plurality, especially with regards to the media. The fourth one is uh, celebrating our culture and values. And the last one, projecting a national viewpoint. When you look at these five uh, 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 TORs uh, that are part, of, part and parcel of uh, what the minister is supposed to do, the statement in question uh, uh, gives them almost a zero out of five. As, as, as both Arnold and Zenzel have already outlined, the statement licenses uh, certain agents, uh, especially in the security services, to act on the basis of the statement. And that is a bad thing, even if that is not the intention of the of the minister. We have seen historically, and Zenzel has given us that historical lessons, that the moment someone is labelled a particular thing, whether you are labelled a sellout, whether you are labelled a subversive element, uh, you then become a prime and legitimate target for those who perceive themselves as patriots or those who perceive themselves as guardians of the state to take action against you. So this is a very, very dangerous statement that the minister has made in, in that in that particular respect. Then the question around um, context again, uh, the, the 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 Kenya thing and and, and stuff like that. I I I, I, I think that the, the government owes us uh, an explanation uh, based in context around why they they, they are doing what they are doing. Uh, in Shona, there is a saying uh, that kwatara the question is, what is it that the government is afraid of that forces uh, it to deploy its spokesperson to offer or proffer such a strong statement without any explanation at the end of the day? And if indeed they are afraid of what happened in Kenya happening in Zimbabwe, the solution is not necessarily to discipline dissent by, by crushing protests or arresting people who are meeting in different locations in the country. The solution is to deal with whatever the problems are. The solution is to create platforms for meaningful engagement where citizens can A, their discontents with uh, anything in the country so that government 
as our legitimate representatives, can be able to do something about those particular issues. The solution is not to beat us into submission. The solution is not to threaten unspecified actions. The solution is not to tell anyone, ZANU-PF or otherwise, that your days are numbered. I think that that language is very uncouth. It is very unbecoming, especially of people who are presiding over the state with the tremendous amount of power that they that, 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 that they have. So, so that is sort of like the second uh, issue that is a cause of concern. Uh, for, 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 for me, where the, 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 the minister is concerned. Uh, lastly, uh, I just want to say that I think at the end of the day, we also need to, 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 to locate, just in the spirit of locating things in context, we need to locate the statement in, in broader developments at a, at a, at a national level. You know, usually uh, regimes like the one that is presiding over, the, over, over this country, the way that they preserve and retain uh, their power is through deploying a three, three-track solution. One is trying to mimic the deploying social democratic solutions around issues that people actually have grievance, grievances around. So if we've got material concerns as citizens, uh, they then deal with those material concerns. And if you want to place it in the context of uh, recent issues, uh, if we are hungry, you say you will give us courts, and then you give people contracts to provide us courts, which uh, inevitably do not do not end. But that is an attempt at dealing with material conditions and issues, especially of the rural uh, majority. And the government has been trying to do that in some respects. Unfortunately, it has been dealing with some very corrupt and very greedy uh, agents who, at the end of the day, do not deliver that particular solution. The other uh, option, the, the, the other route that is used is a rhetorical one around what others have called authoritarian populism. And Jonathan Moyo used to be very, very adept at doing that. This government has proved very, very inadequate to the task of uh, creating a narrative, supporting it, and persuading people to support to support them. So what is then left at the end of the day is this element that we see Ms. Were pushing, which is the law and order solution, where a premise is created and then acted on uh, to, to quell people into submission by use of so-called law and order, by use of uh, military agents, by use of the, uh, of the police force. And through laws and regulations that are themselves a foul of, our, of what the Constitution provides uh, to, to citizens. At the end of the day, the attempt is to curtail street action, it is to curtail association, it is to curtail speech. But unfortunately, that is a temporary solution. And if the government does not deal with the issues that people may be raising uh, as they try to organize around these things. You may be able to quell protests today. You may be able to arrest Job Scholars people today or Jensen Timbers people today, but the problem does not go away. And at some point, it will burst out into the open uh, in ways that may be very, very difficult to control, as the Kenyan situation has uh, adequately shown us um, uh, uh, as fellow Africans. Well, we've come to the end of the show for the Monday morning, man. For myself, it's bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. For feedback, you can contact us on 263-777-470017. Don't forget to follow and like our social media pages.